has to give a gender to the Lord, Ishwara. It can never be neutral. It can only be both he and she. We need to have to resolve our issues, childhood issues with our parents and it is not possible with the fallible parents to resolve the issues. We have to go for the parents who can never be fallible. In Hindi language, there is no neuter gender, there is no it, <laughs> it is something beautiful. Because Ishwara is both he and she, the whole manifestation of Ishwara who is both he and she. Therefore, this language has no neuter at all. Whether we understand this or not, it is wonderful. It is all Ishwara, both he and she. The infallibility is not is not saying god is infallible if one says that one will find god fallible in no time people who believe God is infallible and they pray and the prayer is not answered, God becomes fallible, God also is fallible. Some people turn away from God, I had prayed, he had never answered. Therefore, he is also like my uncle, highly fallible. This is all childish. <coughs> the infallibility is to be understood. When I say the Jagat is a manifestation of Ishwara, assimilating this fact will give you the understanding of what is infallible. In the manifestation, we see different phenomena. Individually, I said they are limitless, countless. But we can categorically for assimilation bring these known and unknown infinite objects, Purnamidam, under some heads like the entire physical world can be reduced to a physical order. All the stars, all the forces in our solar system 
we have our star, the sun, with its system of planets. Is this physical universe with galaxies, with causes and effects in the physical world? We have a different phenomena, all of them under one, one head physical order. The gravitation will come under that. All forces will, other forces will come under that. When I am sitting here, it is within the physical order of Ishwara. My physical body is not away from the physical order of Ishwara. The very fact that I sit, I am not floating around, is because of this physical order. Sound travels physical order. In certain speed, physical order. Light travels in certain speed, physical order. With reference to which we discover motion, we measure motion, etc., is also within this relative world of physical order. Now, this physical order is a manifestation of Ishwara. We call that Ishwara as Virat. That is why in our culture, we don't look upon space as something meaningless. If there is no such thing as space, however, 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 the elusive it is for our understanding that without that space, what we say Akasha, there is no universe, it will all collapse. It needs to be there. And therefore, we don't take it just like that. It's an important manifestation. Time is a great myth, but still it's so important that light travels 180,000 miles per second. It's very important, the time is very important and therefore, however mythical it is, it's so important that we have in this time-space bound universe. So, there are, there are, there are different things we look upon as Ishwara, therefore space is a sacred thing for this culture. In fact, there is a temple in which space is an altar of worship. No culture can do that. Only with understanding of Ishwara we can do that. Chidambaram, when you go to the south, never miss to see Chidambaram. It, there is a great temple. Everybody should go. Every Indian should go because it is Indian's heritage. No matter what religious belief the person has, still one has to go and see the greatness of this temple. Their people, their ancients, what they have achieved, they should admire, understand, assimilate in their lives. Look at this temple, Chidambaram temple, has this great rahasya. When I was maybe 16, first time I went to this temple, my host took me to this temple, of course. I asked him, so please show me what is the rahasya of Chidambaram. Very famous, Chidambara rahasya is famous, that there is a secret of Chidambaram. Rahasya means secret. Chidambara Rahasyam, secret of Chidambaram. Please show me the secret of Chidambaram, because anything secret we want to see. 
and therefore secret of Chidambaram please make me see and then he said wait then there was Arati there's a big curtain the curtain was removed his Arati was done then I looked for a deity a form I didn't see a form then I asked him what is where is the Rakasyam what is the secret he said that is the secret what you don't see anything there did you see anything no I saw one mala golden golden you know this leaves Bilba leaves yeah mala was there that's all I saw and where what what is the secret that is the secret you don't see anything that is a secret but what what is the content what is the secret what it is all about he told me that is the secret you don't see anything is a secret it remained a secret for years but I never gave up to understand the meaning of that secret what is that secret it took years for me to understand that it is praise Ambaram Chidambaram all-knowing Lord he is manifest in the form of space the Lord is invoked in space in space the total Lord is invoked in space Virat here the space itself an altar of worship elsewhere Vayu is here becomes an object of worship there in the shrine you will find in Kalahasti near Tirupadi you will find the in the main shrine a flame always trembling it will never die because there is it's it's a constant light it's a wick and oil light it's a lamp but they keep the lamp going 24 hours 30 days of the month and all through the year and year after year it never dies it is never allowed to die that flame and that flame doesn't stop trembling too that trembling is because there is some through a hole perhaps air is coming all the time air is inferred it is Vayu Linga Linga means symbol through which you understand something Lingate Anene Iti Lingam by this something is understood Lingam the trembling is a Lingam for Vayu smoke is a lingam for fire so this is a logical term in Indian logic lingate anena iti lingam lingate means nyayate buddhyate something is understood by this therefore it is called lingam in western logic the major term is our lingam hetu called hetu the reason because of which you are able to make an inference is lingam and therefore here that vayu is the linga means the lord is invoked as vayu in Tiruvannamalai fire is invoked as the lord in Tirup in Tirunak in Tiruvani Kaval near Trichy water is invoked as the lord the main shrine water keeps coming they have to remove the water they keep on removing parts of water and that's just there's a spring there that water is invoked as the Lord in Kanchipuram this Ekambarishwara is just the earth the five elements are invoked as Ishwara why not anything is Ishwara you can invoke anyone as Ishwara that is why linga form 
which includes all forms itself having a no form all forms included becomes one form and in which we invoke Ishwara the total every form and this this physical universe is is Ishwara's manifestation the physical order is looked upon as Ishwara in this order there is nothing fallible only we try to understand our understanding is fallible our understanding is very little and therefore and this is order and this is an order and therefore what is an order is infallible infallible is the order we need to understand the order and therefore quantum wise you want to understand macro world you want to understand you need to understand and your understanding needs to needs to be thorough then then what is there is infallible that is called the physical order that is why we call it order it's infallible niyati it's not enough it is not just mere physical forms there is life on this planet there is life elsewhere there may be life and there are billions of planets if there are billions of stars there should be billions of planets why not there may be billions of planets and among them many may have life also all that you require is atmosphere on this planet there is atmosphere there is water and you have life and there is biological order understand when you study physics you are trying to understand Ishwara's mind that is why in Indian culture there is nothing secular every knowledge is sacred for us recently there was this Dasara and one day goddess of knowledge is worship as Saraswati what do they do they create an altar what kind of altar by books what books physics geography history chemistry and geology whatever it is the children bring all the textbooks and put them there making a mandala making an altar that altar they worship why because there is there is no secular knowledge all knowledge is sacred because all knowledge is Ishwara what else is sacred Ishwara if at all there is any sanctity attached to anything it is something connected to Ishwara and here it is a manifestation of Ishwara the knowledge of Ishwara is manifest and therefore any subject matter is sacred therefore when you study physics you are trying to have a window perception through a window or through a through a simple hole pinhole you try to see Ishwara that is perception of Ishwara's mind that gives you so much ananda because you are in harmony with Ishwara whenever you discover something there is a joy it is called Vidyanandaha Vidyanande Ishwarandaha Brahmanandaha it is Ananda why you are in harmony with Ishwara Ishwara is all knowledge even one particular fact you shed ignorance of you are in harmony with Ishwara there is Ananda even if a riddle solved there is Ananda a joke understood Ananda a joke not understood and you understand it is not understood there is Ananda for everybody else it's all Ananda <coughs> it's all Ananda and therefore that Vidya is Ananda when you are understanding physics you are trying to understand Ishwara's all knowledge not mind Ishwara's all knowledge
even little. And when you study biology, you are studying the total, total is Ishwara, Samashti is Ishwara. When you study biology, you are not studying the biology of a given organism. You are studying biology in general, how it works. That's why Samashti, research and understanding is such a joy. Anybody given to fundamental research, he will not bother that pursuit for anything else. Because there is such a kick in that. Because you are going after Ishwara right away. And therefore, fundamental research is something special. And those scientists have their own joys. They don't need anything else. They have their own joys. That is because it's a pursuit of Ishwara. The total is Ishwara. The fundamentally you may try to understand what is a platelet in the blood cell. Enough. It's fundamental. There is joy. There is Ishwara in it. Understand this? Therefore, this biology, biological manifestation is a biological order. And as a physical order, Ishwara pervades you, pervades me, pervades your in-laws too. Understand? Don't think your in-laws are outside. Outside they are, even the outlaws are pervaded by Ishwara. It's Ishwara's order. Not enough. There is a physiological order. This physiological order pervades me, pervades you, pervades every frog, every mosquito. It pervades. That is why study of physiology starts with a frog. <laughs> and therefore, so you, you study this. Any medicine, it works on a rat, it will work on a human being. How come? Because, because there's not much of difference. One is a rat, the other is a brat. There's not much a difference. I suppose, I don't know. But definitely, so then they, there is samashti. This is called samashti. Samashti is manifestation of Ishwara. Total is manifestation of Ishwara, there is a physiological order and what is the most important manifestation is to understand the psychological order. In understanding the psychological order, you will discover harmony, you will discover order in yourself, then only you can have that emotionally, emotional what we say maturity or emotionally you discover yourself in order. It's, it's, a, it's a marvelous discovery. We will see that next time when we meet. Thank you.